Pleasant good morning to everyone. Welcome to the first edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Happy New Year 2024. Boy, what uh, a time to be alive. A lot of things going on. And of course, we're going to talk here on the Coles Brown Show uh, some sports. Some sports. Here's what's the guest menu on this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show. We'll be joined by the new head football coach at Southern University, Coach Terrence Graves. He'll join us in hour number two at 12 noon Central Standard Time. Charles Edmond and Coach Van Petaway also will join me on today's show. And we are live today in this new year, the Coles Brown Show, on Instagram. And simply, the Coles Brown Show on Instagram. Here's what's trending on the Coles Brown Show. Coach Willie Simmons resigns from FAMU, no longer the head football coach, now going to be the running back coach at Duke University. The SWAC Conference basketball play kicks off here in 2024. Let the games begin. Also, Texas Southern continues a search for a football coach. It's a new year. Still no definite answer. They're still reviewing candidates. What in the is going on at Texas Southern University? That's what's trending on the Coles Brown show. Now we'll bring in our co-host, our special guest, one being Charles Edmond of the Alcorn State Radio Network and our basketball analyst, Coach Van Petaway. Guys, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year 2024. An exciting time now. Conference play and basketball starting up in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Coach Petaway, you got to be excited now. Very excited, very excited. Uh, they've had the, the SWAC conference has had a lot of success in the preseason. Now it's time to find out. It's time for the, the rubber to meet the road. This is where it really counts. And uh, we got some great matchups uh, this weekend. You're absolutely right. And, and I had to go and pull up some information. I had forgot about the predicted order of finish, both on the women's and men's side. We'll get into that as well. But first, Key point, topic number one, which we take from what's trending. Coach Willie Simmons resigns from uh, FAMU. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be from the outside looking in. But first and foremost, I guess you'd say from my standpoint, congratulations to um, uh, Coach Simmons for him to leave FAMU. You know, financially, he's going to be rewarded. Also, he still have has a goal of becoming a head football coach on the FBS level. With that being said, now FAMU is like a couple other teams in this conference. Coach Petaway, they're looking now for a uh, new football coach. Right, but you know, I, I want to congratulate uh, Coach Simmons also because I think he he has shown and he's done a great job at Florida A and M, and and then I hope that uh, you know the fans understand this is probably this was a business decision for him and his family, uh, you know, being he, going from a head coach to a position coach, but he's going to the FBS, going to the ACC. Uh, he came from the ACC, you know, he played at Clemson, so uh, this is a 
a biz, a career move for him. And I applaud him on, on taking advantage of that because I think a lot of times uh, when the opportunity presents itself, we don't jump on it. He did. He, he Like he said, he was prayerful about it. He thought about it. And it's a great move. Uh, he and Coach Diaz, you know, they have a history. They coached together before. So I, I think it's a win-win for him. I know the Rattler Nation, uh, you know, they're a little disappointed. But but you got to applaud the man because he gave it his all while he was there. And now cheer him on as he moves forward. Because if he's going to make that move to another level in terms of head coaching, this was the right move for in the interim, you know, to, to be uh, a position coach. And, and then he'll probably have a lot to say about how they're going to run their offense. He'll have some input in that. So this is only a win-win situation for him. So I'm happy for him, Carlos. Yes, and then also when you look at it, you know, from the fans and alumni, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he left the program in good shape. Yeah, you know, coming off a, a, a SWAC football championship uh, previously before then, um, you know, great record, two losses most of the time, one being to Jackson State, but they were able to get their goal of winning a championship. Then not only that, the HVC national championship. So he's left the program. Um, in great shape. And that's all you can ask for. And now the next coach coming in for FAMU, his job is going to be to maintain the program and, and keep it uh, uh, going. And also, you know, the AD, uh, she will have an important decision to make. And I guess now you, you know, again, from the outside looking in, Coach Petaway, I'm sure they're going to have a committee. And, and I'll, I'll talk to my colleagues here on the network uh, who are more invested in FAMU and, and our uh, graduates. But, you know, I, I believe in most cases now, and you kind of see it even with the Texas Southern situation with the Southern University, uh, ADs in some cases have been allowed to make a direct hire. But now we kind of see in a clash of that where, board of directors, uh, board of supervisors, per se, at Southern University, uh, they want to be kept abreast and they want to be involved, uh, involved in the, uh, the hire. So with that being said, everybody's got to be on the same page. I mean, I, I, I've seen where ADs have uh, the wherewithal to make a direct hire, but we kind of see in, in a couple of other cases now where the boards come back and say, well, wait a minute. We we need to be more involved in the hiring process. Right. Well, I, well, I think what you're doing when, um, when you give the athletic director that position, mm -hmm. the board should stay out of the day-to-day -day operation. I mean, they. Um, I think you gave your support when you picked that athletic director. Now, if you're going to have a search committee, let the search committee and the athletic director come up with the candidates and then present them to the, to the president and you go from there. But um, I think it's a sad situation when uh, you got a board in our case, it was a board of trustees involved in the day-to-day -day operations. That's not good. That's not good for the student athletes. That's not good for the uh, athletic administration. So give them, the authority to make the hire. If you're going to use a commit search committee, use the search committee, but stand by what they come up with, man. And I think that's the only way you, you should really be able to do this, Carlo. So I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words when it comes to what's happening out at Texas Southern. Now, Florida and them, they'll probably get it right. And if they listen to the students, I think right now the football, uh, the players, they've already made their decision. They, they want a coach that's already there. So uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a big it, it's a big job when you when you hire a new coach, but the athletic director is the person who has their feet on the ground and feel the pulse of the athletic department and what's really going on. Bo uh, board members a lot of times uh, they're not even in the same city, so they don't they don't even get the pulse of what's going on. So I, I just hope that. This thing is over quickly for uh, 
Texas Southern. I still feel sorry for uh, the entire process because it, it, it doesn't look good. It, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. So uh, hopefully it'll come to a head here soon. But I just think you need to go back to the old fashioned way of where you got a search committee or an athletic director who comes up with a committee and they vet the candidates and they come up with their choice and you move forward for that. Leave it. If, if the athletic director makes that that higher, then hold them accountable. Hold them accountable. Yes. But uh, you can't play with with people's lives. And I think that's what has happened right now uh, with Coach McNair and his family. And uh, I feel for him because he doesn't deserve that. He does not deserve that. This man has paid his dues uh, in the SWAC, uh, and he should not be treated this way. Well, the uh, only thing I would add to that as well, uh, I, I know, and I'm not a, 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 an AD, but I would keep those people in influence. I always <laughs> put it in that category. Let them know what's going on throughout the process. And that's the only thing I would add. And then also to uh, players, you know, they should be involved. You consult with them. But ultimately, it goes down to the director of athletics. Right. When he or she makes a hire, if it does not work out, then you know where the buck stops. Right. So, yeah. So that's the only thing I would uh, add to that. Charles is, is back. Uh, but we're talking, uh, if you're just tuning in, Coach Willie uh, Simmons resigns from uh, FAMU. They're in the process now of uh, hiring a new football coach. Uh, we've talked about uh, Coach Simmons and uh, a career move. And also, he left the program in better shape, in good shape, than he found it. So we'll continue on. But go ahead, Charles. Yeah, to your point, he left it in terrific shape. I mean, if you just look at over the last three years where that program was, if you go back to the North Carolina game and the, the certification of the players and right. how Coach Simmons handled that, you know, you know, he brought in a new AD and she brought it up, you know, to to, to very good standards. So the program is in very, very good shape. They hit the trifecta this year. They won the division. They won the swag. They won the celebration bowl. And so the program is in really, really good shape. And Florida a &M Athletics is in really good shape. I mean, if you look at the last six months, the baseball team won the SWAC championship, a uh, new women's basketball coach. So a lot of forward momentum with FAMU Athletics right now. And so right now you just got to find the right coach and the right fit. Uh, we had the same situation here at Alcorn when Jay Hobson left here to go to USM to be the head coach. And look at who replaced him, Fred McNair. And you saw how that turned out for the first several years of his tenure. So the question is for A.D. Sykes, one of the biggest hires in maybe FAMU athletic history at this point, because the program is on a forward progress, momentum shift in a good way. A lot of good stuff happening. So you got to make a really good hire. But congratulations to Willie Simmons. Wish him the best of luck at Duke. I think he had to take that gig. I think right. he did. About all he can do at FAMU. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you want to be petty, you can say that, you know, when they went to the FCS playoffs, they didn't make any, any headway there. If you want to be petty about it, I'm not. But I think for what we talk about, he did all he could do. So congratulations to him. And we'll see what the next hire brings. And, you know, it's interesting. I, I kind of been monitoring the situation from an uh, athletic standpoint. They've done great. Now, I, I understand that from a financial standpoint, you can always be better. Always for his resources and what have you. But just kind of monitoring some of the situation, and I guess I don't understand again. I will, you know, talk to some of the guys from the network here who are family graduates. You you kind of sense some special feelings toward uh, the, the, the a AD. And I'm bringing up this because some would say, well, you, you knew that in October, October, I believe it was, that it was time for um, to, 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 to work out to keep Coach Simmons there. And some 
in the Rattler Nation believed that it wasn't enough done to, to keep him there. So again, I will kind of talk to some of our colleagues here who are on the inside of FAMU and, and, and see if that's just, is that true? Is that had something to do with it? But from the standpoint today, congratulations to Coach Willie Simmons. I, I don't know what more you could have done. That I, I really don't know what more yeah. you could have done, Carlos. I mean, at the end of the day, the salary that Coach Simmons was offered at Duke, you know what that is. Um, either you can you can get close to it and hope that he stays and you have to give some plans in terms of going forward, maybe you improve brag and more for your coaches and all of that. But at the end of the day, Coach Simmons is from the FBS cloth. Clemson, he, he's familiar with that. And there's no doubt that, in my opinion, he probably was ready to get back there. And so I think there's you can only do what you can do. You can only afford what you can afford. And, I, and in my personal opinion, if, if FAMU comes close to matching it, Duke might have gone and pushed it a little bit further. If if um, if Duke's coach wants to keep Willie Simmons and wants to get him, he's going to get him, and no matter what amount of money. So at some point, you know, you got to get to that point. So I, I think at the end of the day, I don't. I think FAMU probably did what was responsible for them to get it as close and show Coach Simmons that, hey, this is what we can offer. This is the best we can do. And at the end of the day, he took the Duke offer. Right. And then, Carlos, I'm looking at this. Back in October, this opportunity wasn't there. You know, the, uh, Diaz hadn't gone to Duke. So so in, in, in October, Willie Simmons is, getting ready, is in the midst of his season. He doesn't have time to be uh, dealing with a contract. You know, so the con they did the right thing. They were going to uh, look at his contract after the season, mm -hmm. even though I felt like, with his success, that thing was going to have to jump. And that's why I, I said on here a couple of weeks ago, that's where the creative financing would have come in, where they would have found ways to uh, to make sure that he was being compensated without it all coming from the university. So I, I think FAMU Athletics and the, and the president, I think they handled this the right way. This opportunity came up after the season. It had nothing to do with during the season or before the season. Diaz was not at Duke. Uh, one of his former colleagues was not, did not have the opportunity for him to come forward. It's interesting. Um, I'm kind of looking at something in, in, in the chat room, but yeah, take away the Duke offer. The director of athletics and those of influence knew that if they wanted to keep him, see, I, I just, I just believe you don't start after the season if you really want somebody, and if they, and if they've done a good job, I wouldn't wait to the end. You can put out feelers. You can, you can negotiate. Yeah, thank you. One minute to the break. Um, but hey, ultimately, if he wants to leave, he's going to leave. But on your part, if you've done the most that you can do, and you feel comfortable with that. Then your conscience is clear. I just brought that up because I see some people had said that asked that question. Could they could they do? Did they do as much as they could? Forget about the offer to do, because that wasn't there in October. Did they do the most? Did they did the absolute best? And if they did, their conscience is clear just had to, uh, 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 to bring it up. Uh, we need to take a break. Coach Simmons resigns from FAMU. Now FAMU is in the process of selecting a new head football coach. When we come back, Coach Petaway, we're going to kick off talking some swag basketball. Wow. And I got the <laughs> predicted order for finish on both yep. men's and women. We'll talk about that and the schedule. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Supermarket sushi, really? No, wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. 
Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Guys, we're also uh, live on Instagram for the first time. Moving, broadening the horizon. Topic two, SWAC basketball season conference play uh, kicks off. And if you look at the uh, preseason poll, uh, on the women's side, of course, Jackson State picked number one, Southern number two, Pine Bluff three, Alabama and m four, fifth, Alabama State, sixth, Prairie View, seventh, Bethune Cookman, eight, Gremlin State, nine, Alcorn State, 10, FAMU, 11, Texas Southern and Valley, number 12. Coach Petaway, Jackson State, so much success. Over the last four or five years, picked to, to get it done again. I preseason predicted all of the finish. I can't disagree with uh, the top spot. Right, I agree. I, I it they are the team that everybody else has to dethrone. I mean, when it comes to the conference, they've been dominant on the women's side, and but it's in the preseason. You know, it's not pr- playing out. You know, they picked uh, Bethune-Cookman seventh, and right now they're leading the SWAC, uh, the standings with with nine wins. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know how – in some cases, these the wins in SWAC have uh, – in the preseason, rather, have been great, you know, because they've been against uh, some some nice schools. We got a couple of Division twos and, and NAIA sprinkled in there. But for the most part, on the men and women's side, We've had some great wins, but just to just to go to show you uh, on the women's side, they did pick Jackson State. I think when the conference play start, we'll be able to tell early whether or not that prediction is going to hold up. But uh, then in second place right now, Gramlin State, uh, and they were picked eighth in the preseason poll. Uh, Jackson State was picked first, but they're in third right now. Alabama A&M, they were, they're they they in the spot that they were picked. They're fourth right now. Uh, P, uh, Prairie View was picked six, and uh, they've moved up. So I think one of the surprises to me 
uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff in the preseason was picked third, and uh, they've fallen off a little bit in the preseason. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to shape out. But it all starts this weekend. So we we we're going to find out early who who's for real. This is where the, the rubber meets the road because it's it's conference swag time. Yeah, and on both sides, both women and men, some uh, big wins out of conference, uh, uh, Charles and Coach Petaway, and that's one of the things you, you kind of seen improvement um, both on the women's and the men's side because still some of the, those schedules are, are pretty, pretty tough. Yeah, yeah, they're tough. Go ahead, go ahead, Charles. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, they are tough. Um, what's happened in the last couple of months is what it is. But I've talked with our coaches, and I think you talk to other coaches in the conference, they'll say what happened in November and December doesn't matter right now. Um, I, I'm here in Jackson, and I'm watching their team. They're a very deep team. This may be the deepest team Coach Reed has had. You know, it's no Misha Williams holiday just dumping it in. They got inside work. They got some good guards. They're 15 deep, including two SWAC transfers. A vent from Texas Southern, kid from Valley that can score. But I think it's going to be very competitive uh, on, on all sides. I think teams are hungry for a win. We're hungry for a win. We had won a game on the men's side in almost two months since uh, our men's team won a game. On the women's side, it's been over a month. So we're hungry. I think Jackson's women's lost five in a row. And so there's going to be some hungry teams here as, as we get ready for conference today. You know, that's interesting. I'm, I'm looking at uh, and this curse of the SWAC office. Um, for example, forced turnovers per game, Grambling State nationally, it's a good statistic. In spite of, you know, maybe not the strongest non-conference schedule, but but they but they're getting it done. Some things you can, you know, harp on and look at to prepare you for conference play. Uh, and this is on the women's side. Bench points per game, Grambling State again. Uh, 34.7 points coming off the bench. And when I was looking on the men's side, uh, Southern getting a great amount of points from, from the bench. So some things to, to look, on that, look at, but they don't cook with four turnovers per game, 23 a game. And again, those are things I think, you, you, you know, you build on. And as much as I rant and raved about, you know, being balanced with their schedule, I think overall, both on the men's and the women's side, I've seen some um, marked improvement. And it carries mm -hmm. one now into, and I understand what you're saying, Charles, in the conference. Now, you know, hey, you wipe the slate clean. Everybody starts zero and zero. But there are some things that you could take from those non-conference games. Um, and, and, and in particular, Coach Petaway talked about Bethune Cookman with, with, with nine wins. Grandma State's with six. On the men's side, Southern University, six wins. Two were against Mississippi State and UNLV. So there are some things to look at that I think that helps to prepare you for this uh, conference race. Right. And see, Carlos, see, during this time of the year, the preseason schedule was for these coaches to learn their team, find out, find a different combination, come up with your rotation. So all mm -hmm. that has been done now it's time to put it into action in conference play. So I, I would feel like most of the coaches are probably uh, happy with uh, their set rotations. They probably know who they can plug in, what in terms of game situation, what they would need to do on the floor because you've been battle tested in some of these games. Now in the games where you just uh, overmatch, it's right. hard for you to pick out. Uh, it's hard for you to understand what your team is really doing because your opponent has taken that uh, out of your hands. But on the game, in the games that are competitive, you can really come up with your rotations. You can really come up with your style of play. You come up with your game time situations uh, that you can implement during the preseason. And, and going back briefly to the schedule, I'm going to tell you what I, I liked about our schedule. Yes, we still had some of the heavyweights on the schedule, mm -hmm. but we saw more regional play uh, in, in the SWAC schedule, you saw a lot of the SWAC teams playing more te uh, more schools who have similar budgets. And whereas in the past we didn't do a lot of that, we just always went for the big for the bucks uh, with the Power Five teams. So uh, I, I really like that, and I think that'll help the coaches in their 
evaluations uh, of their programs and their teams and their personnel because this gives you a better picture when you when you're playing against teams that are similar to what you are or what you have rather. Yeah, because we, we look at some of the schedule, Dr. Cavill asked how many uh were division uh one wins. That's that's a good question. You'd have to go and look at I guess everybody's uh individual schedule. And I know Dr. Cavill kind of keeps a running tab on you know wins versus MIAC up out of other conference opponents. Um but we we'll come back to again. And we talked about a lot of times about this being uh, having a balanced schedule because, you know, I know they got to bring in some uh, uh, monetary uh, finances with some of those out of conference schedules. Then you have, as you say, some regional games and some regional wins. And then you had some some upsets. No other way to put it, both on the women's and the men's side, particularly on the men's side, you know, even, you know, Jackson State with, with, with a big win out of conference. So it goes back to balance. How much balance are you going to have in the schedule? Will we see director of athletics have more of, in the coming years, a, a more balanced non-conference schedule? I, I think that you're going to have to do it because the NIT, all right, so we talk about the NCAA tournament. The NCAA tournament, we know the winner of the SWAC tournament is going there. But the NIT has made some changes in their processes in terms of who they select as far as the NIT. And so I'm worried, Coach Petaway, with the NIT that we may not, even though we had a sample, a, a sprinkling of wins out of league, I'm worried about not enough of it to where we get a bid in the NIT. There's a possibility we that might not happen. And so we did, we did it the last two years because we had some wins out of league. But this year, even though early on we did, I, I think, you know, we didn't down the stretch. And I think what Dr. Cavill was talking about, you know, Gremlin beating the College of Biblical Studies by 100 right. points and all and, that. And, and see, I, and you notice I didn't even bring that, bring yeah. that up yeah. because yeah. It, it doesn't even deserve any airtime yeah. at yeah. all. That's literally yeah. exhibition game. And right. Charles, that'll, that'll skew your stats too, because that you know that, that your stats are not realistic when you when you get uh, teams in there like that. And I understand what Doc is saying. Uh, you know the, the quality of our wins are there against Division One opponents. Now, for the most part, most of our teams play Division One non-conference schedule. Yeah, we got a sprinkling of uh, Division Twos and NAIAs in there, but but to me. You got to have that. You need that for sanity for you and your players. You know, you, you can't go out there and 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 get your head beat in night in and night out and then expect those kids to be ready for conference play. So, you know, sprinkling a, a game or two in there, I have never been against that. Never been against that. But I, I would have wanted to play a little a stronger opponent than what Gramlin played. But but to sprinkle in a couple of games like that, because I look at it this way, when the Power Five schedule us, that's how they look at it. They, you know, so, some of them, some of those leagues, they don't want those teams are, are playing us because they don't consider us high enough in the Division One rankings to be on the schedule. They they look at us as Division Two, in some cases, not all cases, now, and that's why I'm happy when we do pull off a win or we, we, we upset somebody. Uh, and, and, and that, that just does great for our conference in terms of, uh, mm -hmm. I think they call it the net. Now we yeah. used to be the RPI, but, but our mm -hmm. net ranking comes up because we have gotten some of these wins. I think it's just a, again, you talk about balance. I think, you know, on one end, the ADs want to bring in these guarantee game checks on one end. But then do the coaches collectively, are they interested in the NCAA tournament? Are they interested in an NIT bid? I think that's that's where the conversation has to be had in these spring meetings. If you if you poll coaches, are they interested in that? I mean, right. so I and so yeah, and I agree with you. You want to play, you want to win, you want to taste a victory. You know, we haven't right. tasted a victory in 58 days on the men's side. We haven't tasted a victory in over 30 days on the women's side. We, we want to taste these victories. We want to win games and get a little momentum going into conference. And so I think that's why we play down. And that's what we do. We we play down. 
just to taste that victory. Because if not, winning's contagious, losing is contagious too. So I understand why we do it. But then come March, we start griping and groaning and complaining. And then we got to go back to November and December. That's my always been my personal opinion about that. But if we're not interested in it, if coaches aren't, if ADs are looking at the game checks, then this is where we are. Right. But, and but, Charles, but, 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 but haven't we had this conversation yeah. for years? Yeah, so yeah. sitting there, even have to ask that question. ADs, for the most part, they – they ask the coaches to bring in a certain X amount of dollars, right? For those who just tuned in, maybe have never heard this. I've heard it till I'm almost ill. <laughs> so, if it comes back in these, in, in, at the end of the season, you got to have a discussion again. The answer is simple: <laughs> balance. Get away from those top-heavy type money guarantee games. Some of this conference still do that. You have some institutions have balance. What's the key word again? Balance. Balance. So we shouldn't have to. Uh oh, here we go. I disagree with Coach. We should never schedule these exhibition games. There's no excuse. The Southland and the OVC are nearby schedule those games, not the College of Biblical Science. No, I've said them both now. I, I, that's regional. That's regional schedule. Mm -hmm. I, I said that's one of the things that I thought that we did a better job of this year. That's considered regional ske scheduling. We played those schools. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Prairie View, UT Martin, that, that's in the OVC. Uh, a and we played Tennessee State, that's in the OVC. Uh, fam, you played Presbyterian, that's in the Big South. And, and these are all men game. Uh, we played uh, Eastern Kentucky, Prairie mm -hmm. View, that's A-Sun. So that's regional scheduling uh, for the most part. Now, when we talk about schedule, let's, let, me, let, let me put this out there. When you look at uh, the Big Ten and the SEC in football, what do they do? They take their, their conference schedule, then they sprinkle in. Everybody gets an FCS opponent, all right? That's equivalent to us scheduling a Division II opponent. So now what's wrong? Why is it okay for them to schedule and play down, but we, we can't? Now, I'm going to say this again. I I think you can schedule down. You just don't get an opponent like what Gremlin had. And, oh, and, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, Carlos, I, I know you got to go to break, so we'll talk about it more when you come back. Go ahead. Yeah, and I think we may be losing Charles. Um, Charles. Okay. Because I know you have to get ready for a broadcast. Oh. You muted, Charles. Well, we'll take a time out. When we come back, it'll be more of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell leadership principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard, as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge. 
featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Yours truly, Carlos Brown. Boy, you got to kind of love the atmosphere when you're at a uh, Black College football game. Basketball, the same thing. The bands are there. Uh, The SWAC tipping off uh, conference play here in 2024. Who? Who will win the championship? Both regular season and tournament. SWAC basketball tournament on the men's and the women's side. Um, SWAC opening kickoff, tip off, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Grambling State, and Southern each claim key non conference power five wins this season. Grambling State defeated Arizona State, Arkansas Pine Bluff defeated Arkansas, and Southern. defeated Oklahoma. This is on the um, on the women's side. Also, Jackson State was tabbed as the preseason favorite in the league's preseason poll uh, heading into the 23-24 season. The Tigers were followed by Southern second, Arkansas Pine Bluff third, Alabama and m fourth, and Alabama State fifth to round out the top preseason poll selection. Uh, we're going to get Coach Petaway back in uh, very shortly. Um, but when we also look at Jackson State's Angela Jackson was named 2023-2024 SWAT preseason uh, defensive player of the year. Jackson State's Tiana Bowler was tapped the 2023-2024 SWAT preseason offensive player of the year. Alcorn State and Jackson State will tip off HBCU Go coverage uh, Saturday, of course, January 6th at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thus, while Charles Edmund uh, had to uh, leave early to get ready for the broadcast, that's Alcorn State and Jackson State, and then followed by the men's game in uh, Lee Williams Athletic and Assembly Center, of course, in Jackson, Mississippi, and the 2024 Pepsi Swack Basketball Tournament is slated for Wednesday, March 13th through March 16th at Barlow, a Bartow Arena located in Birmingham, Alabama. Carlos, I, I think it'll be, I think it, mm-hmm. it's it's gonna be an exciting season. And like you said, it, you know, it, it starts today, man. It we and we got some important matchups. Some important matchups. Um the schedule. We'll kind of take a look at it for today, of course, Alcorn State and Jackson State, uh, FAMU uh, mm-hmm. at, at Alabama A&M, Prairie View at Gramlin State, Texas Southern, of course, at Southern. Wow. Coach, I, I might as well give up on uh, switching that up in the conference. Southern will always, it seems in the near future, play Texas Southern and Prairie View to start out conference play. Right, but what, but 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 Carlos, at least you'll find out early where you stand. I mean, because you know Texas Southern pre, even though you know they haven't done it in the preseason now, 
But, you know, the prognosticators think that Texas Southern will win it again. So if if you all can play, uh, can defend your home court, that'll go a long way because, you know, you got Texas Southern and Prairie View coming in this weekend. Uh, I mean, about Saturday and then again on Monday. You 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 could be leading the conference uh, come Monday night. So, that, that, I mean, that that's a good thing. You can get this out of the way. Yeah, somehow I, I can see that point. But I just like to mix it up. It's like every uh, every Monday you eat the same, you eat the same thing: red beans and rice. Yeah, but, but 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 I understand your point, and, and it's a point well taken. I just like to mix it up a little bit. But guess what? What I want and what I like, they could care <laughs> less about that. So to your point, you start off with uh, two tough ball games, but you got to play. Texas Southern Prairie View, no matter. So, right. I, I guess to your point, you play you play them early, and then um, I, and, and then the Grambling and Prairie View game. That's going to be a big game on the men's side because huge. uh you know PV has played well in the preseason, and and the Grambling got has got them at their place. So I'm looking forward to that. And then you mentioned Florida a and them is at Bethune Cookman, so we're going to see if if Bethune is is the real deal, and. I know before Charles left, he was talking about um, Alcorn. You know, they've lost 11 in a row, and they got Jackson State. They go to Jackson State. So that'll, that's going to be pivotal, that game. And I know uh, Coach Williams is, is, is excited about that game, uh, being able to bring Alcorn in there uh, today because, you know, that's the, these are more like rival games to start to, to kick off your season. And I, I think it's it's great for our fans. So swag basketball will get kicked off today at two, uh, you know, at, at noon in some places because the men's game is at two thirty. So uh, that means their women will be playing. And so I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I think it's going to be a very exciting season. You know, and, and Charles was talking about you know Alcorn thirsty for a win, but I'm sitting there thinking about well, you know, Coach Bussy's a you know, his philosophy is tough. But again, we'll go back to being be, being balanced. You know, looking at those non-conference games. When you're when you're balanced like that, it gives you an opportunity to get some wins. Um, and we were kind of going back and forth in the chat room about um, you know, certain non-conference games. No, I'm not advocating playing uh, those type of teams. But I think you can find some, you know, some some regional in the future games. Right. Uh, you know, uh, playing a Sanford out, out, out of Birmingham. You know, right. a, a school close by uh, like that. Um, I mean, you can. It, it, you just got to be creative with with that schedule. You don't want to have it top heavy with all of those guaranteed games, but you're gonna have to play a you know a, a few. Right, because when you look at it. Like on the men's side, Mississippi Valley is coming in the conference play 0 and 13. Mm -hmm. Alcorn's coming in 1 and 12. Alabama AM coming in in 1 and 12. Uh Texas Southern 2 and 9. Florida AM 2 and 9. Uh so that's real tough on those kids. Uh you, 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 AM has lost seven in a row. Alcorn 11. Uh Mississippi Valley 13. So coming in, coming in the conference play. Where are your kids mentally? And that's what we as coaches have to really think about when we try to put together a schedule. Yeah, you got to meet that financial obligation, but I also have an obligation to my players too. You know, their mental health, their mental health is important. You know, I know some of our fans, they don't want to see us. And in order to get a home game, let your kids be at home some during that, that preseason. Uh, bring in a couple of opponents. It's hard to get uh, – you're not going to get a power five to come in unless we have an agreement like we had with the Pac-12. Right. So they're, they're not coming to your place. Uh, I, I can give you an example here. Uh, as long as UAB has played basketball, do you know that their first time coming to Huntsville was a couple of weeks ago? Wow. And the only reason why they came is because they played in the event center. You couldn't get teams to come into Elmore. They, they, they wouldn't play. I played Auburn in Huntsville. But in order to play them, I had to take them to the downtown arena. They didn't want to come on campus. So uh, a lot of times our fans and, and 
and alumni don't understand how difficult it is to put together a schedule. And if you want a home game, a lot of times the only people that you can bring in will be the Division Twos and the NAIA. And, and I promise you, playing one or two of them is not bad. I, I don't think it's that bad. Because what, what you got to think about is the mental health of you and your players. Yeah. Well, and too, if, if you kind of look at Southern, bringing in a Southeastern University, and by the way, Southern spanked them pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, in Louisiana, you have Northwestern State. You have Nickel State. Right. So you, you, you kind of add those guys. And, and to me, those games I look at with special interest because we're talking about a equal uh, opponent for, as, you know, perhaps resources. Right. Not, not to the T, the, the dollar and cents, but, you know, a, 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 as far as also a conference, and the type of conference they play in, the, the Southland, the OVC, those different type of games. So um, a coach theoretically should have to worry about wins and losses, putting the student athletes in a position to be successful academically. But unfortunately, unfortunately, some of the coaches have to also be a, a part-time AD because they <laughs> because they got to bring them in and we've had and we had Willa Brown on many times and we've had some lively discussions but coach it goes back to your point you just got to be balanced with all of this and now and, and Charles will always bring up this point coaches will be hired or let go not based on those non-conference schedules but the conference schedule but if if no. you're a, but if you're a competitor, Coach Petaway, don't you want to win, have a chance to win outside the conference? Yes, and you help, do. And to help do that is, here we go back to that schedule again, put yourself in a position to have the best success. Oh, EA says, Coach, what about the mental health of players when you play a home game here in December and 200 people show up? Well, well let me, t- I, let think me of, tell you. I think it's the opponents. Right, look, that'll never happen. To, that never happened to me at Alabama AM. We mm-hmm. I know how to put together a schedule. Here in Alabama, if if you play, if you play uh Tuskegee, if you play Miles College, you guaranteed a few thousand people. You're not gonna, it's not gonna be an empty arena. I yeah, I have seen plenty of games like that. You can go, you can go on the road to power five. And you don't you won't have a full house in some case. All you got to do is look at the attendance in some of these games. That's going to happen. Yeah, if I was in a place where I wasn't drawn, then yeah, it would be a problem. But fortunately, here in Huntsville, we we draw. Our attendance is good. We played UAB. There are no students on campus. They they had almost three thousand people in the arena. You know, so our, our games are well attended. Our women played the other day at two o'clock. They had over a thousand people in the arena. So I I just think it's is it depends on where you are and you got to know your clientele. I know how to put a schedule together where uh people are coming into the arena. Oh, I'm looking at Dr. Caville. I'm willing to pay more on my season ticket package for more home games, right. i.e. five to six, right. a mix between division two, NAIA, Division One, HBCU, and regional division. And regional, one. right. That's mm-hmm. what I'm Carlo. Doc is, he he hit it the nail on the head. That's all I'm saying. That's, that has, that was always my philosophy when putting together a schedule. Mm -hmm. And if I was coaching today, it would still be the same way. I would do me a mixture of games. I would try to get me some home games. I have never played a schedule since we've been in division one where all the games were on the road. I will never do that to my kids. That's tough. That's not good. That's not even good for me as a coach. Mm. I wouldn't want every game to be on the road. Let me sleep in my bed and get up and and, and go play a game. I don't want to play every game out of a hotel. And and that's taxing. See, a lot of times, maybe the people that don't understand, they've never been an athlete. They They haven't been an athlete, I'm sorry, on a collegiate level. But you don't want to be on the road the whole time, man. You got to. You, for your sanity, for your kids' sanity, for my fans. How am I going to ask my fans to buy a season ticket 
when I come, I show up for conference play and I'm 0 and 13. That's coming out. Yeah, that that's tough. Remember, I, I joked about that on, on several shows. Two and ten. Right. One and eleven. That that's tough because you don't have any momentum. And that's why I would always, me and Charles would kind of clash on this. I understand what he's saying, but I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. You, what's the word again? Balance with your Balance, non-conference yeah. schedule. Mixture, as um, uh, Dr. Cavill said. It's a mixture, but boy, you, you're putting yourself behind the eight ball. But then when you get in conference play, unless you go on a magical run and go almost undefeated, it's just going to be tough. Momentum. You right. want to have some wins in the column when you come into conference play. I'm I'm more excited to come see a team that's six and seven, albeit it's right. not a winning record, but it's six wins. Right. right. Then, two, then two wins were against UNLV and Mississippi State, and they did it on the road. Right. So you know your team can play, so – that's why today is going to be very important for all of our SWAT uh, institutions. The fans need to come out. We need to come out and, su and show support. And see, when you put together a schedule, I did things like I would never play a home game when our students were gone. I, want, I tried my best to play when our students were there because I knew our students and fan base would come out. That, and that's why we created – uh, a, a winning atmosphere in Elmore. Uh, when you came in there, you always had a decent crowd. When you came in there, they were spirited. They got into it. And it was because of scheduling, the way we schedule. You know, uh, a, a lot of times you play a home game, your student's not even on campus. Well, who's going to come to the game? Uh, a lot of the communities don't have enough community support for them, for the fans to come out and 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 have a big showing. So why schedule games when your students are not there? And that was part of the thing that I did. I would take that university calendar with me when I started, when I sat down to do uh, my home schedule. And I wanted to make sure that our student body had a chance to come out and support those kids. And we just got to do more of that. Yeah. But, but the key word is regional ballot. Is is a regional and balance on your schedule. That That's all it takes. Yep. Well, hopefully in the near future, maybe two years from now, we're all here and in good health. Um, we're not having this discussion. We will see more balance, you know. Um, but, but Carlos, one of the big things now, we still got to wait to see what formula or format the NC2A is going to use when they do this expansion now. You know, currently you got the automatic qualifiers are coming from your tournament champion. All right. When they expand, you got two things to look forward to. What the NC2A is going to do, are they going to take your conference champion versus the tournament champion, right? Mm -hmm. Then what? once the NC2A gets their piece in place, what is the NIT going to do? Because mm -hmm. under the current format, if, if your conference champion loses in the tournament, they get an automatic to the NIT. Will that change when the NC2A uh, change their metric? So, see, we, we, we're still in the wait and see for the HBCUs, for the SWAC and the MEAC. Hmm. Will we ever be in a position to where we can get two teams in, two bids? Well, that's going to require some some work. Right. And then it comes back to that scheduling part. On that note, we'll wrap up. Black basketball talk. Uh, some huge games coming up. We'll be able to look and see uh, at the end of conference play. Will we see the predicted order finish? Will it have played out that way? Yeah. That's a good thing about it. You know, prognosticators get their prediction, but you can compare and contrast. And the great thing about it, Coach Petaway. The games are not played in the predicted order finish. Right. It's, it's on the court. the court. Yep. And we will see how it all turns out. We got to take our top of the hour break. When we come back, Coach Graves is 
in the waiting room. Good, good. We'll we'll talk to uh, Coach Terrence Graves, new head football coach at Southern University. And you're talking about an assistant who was looking for the opportunity. Now you got it. So we'll talk to Coach Graves next. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Time to call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you, got, you guys do for us. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network and now live on Instagram. Our next guest, a special guest, sit down with Coach Terrence Graves. I got a chance to meet him years ago, and uh, one of the first things that stood out to me was, if I said, thought of one word, it was passion. And it still burns to this day. Uh, a lot of times I, I appreciate Coach Graves uh, answering questions for me, you know, explaining things to me on, on the football field. And, you know, the, the, the interesting thing is, as a fan, as an alum, we think we're just as great as a guy that's been co had been coaching for years. That's why I like Coach Petaway. I bring him on the show. It kind of keeps me grounded. Because you're fighting an alum, a supporter, a fan, all tied up in one body. It can be tough at times. But we welcome uh, Coach Terrence Graves, head football coach at Southern University. And, and I know he is a guy that's been on the move. Coach, happy new year to you. Appreciate 
uh, coming on the show. I know you've been a busy, busy guy. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, happy New Year to you. Uh, happy New Year to you, Coach Petaway. Hey, same um, here, Coach. Um, busy is an understatement. Uh, yes, sir. I actually uh, got held up in the airport the other day, so I was I got back a day later than I wanted to, and uh, just I rushed home to get on um, get online because I just concluded a uh, official visit weekend with some guys uh, this weekend, and the reason why I did it uh, today is because this afternoon, well, this evening, I'm flying out to Nashville to the American Football Coaches Association convention. Mm -hmm. yeah. wow. So uh, so, <laughs> so in between that and, and trying to, uh, you know, take care of the business of the day and get the program uh, on, on, on off and running, uh, yeah, bu busy is an understatement. But, hey, I, I love it. I enjoy it. It's a blessing to be in, in this position, to have this opportunity. Uh, I thank God for the opportunity. So uh, to whom much is given, much is required. So, yep. Um, this is year 32 for me, and um, I'm, re I'm ready, willing, and able. Right. And, you know, uh, Coach Graves, uh, when you were announced, and, uh, you know, kind of, your mind kind of goes on different things, and, um, you know, your parents, and, you know, I'm sure they, they are proud of you. Have you had a chance now, after all the congratulations, going back home to visit have you had a chance to just sit back and just think about hey i'm the head football coach at, at southern university well i've had uh i've had a moment to to do that and I, and when i say moment it was a moment because <laughs> <laughs> next, day, next day you know his phone is ringing um uh, you know Really, I tell you, uh, Carlos, Coach Petway, I've had an opportunity to to sit back and really uh, just be thankful and grateful mm -hmm. for what God has blessed me uh, to do in my life and, and get me to this point. Uh, you know, I got had a chance. I was very emotional uh, when I actually found out that it was happening because mm -hmm. first thing I thought about was I thought about my parents, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. my, my father, Rufus Graves Sr., and my mother, Dorothy Graves, uh, of course, they are going on to to glory. And um, but I remember my mind went back to when I was a little boy. I started playing football at the age of five. And, um, you know, I thought about all those times. And I remember my first championship game. Uh, I was so happy to be playing in the championship game the Friday night before I went to bed. I put my whole uniform on. Uh, wow. Cleats. I even had my mouthpiece in. So the, next morning, so the next morning when my father came in to wake me up, it startled him. He jumped back. He <laughs> my mother because I was looking up at him like this. And uh, he said, he went and got my mother. He said, look, I want you to come see your baby boy. And she walked in the room. She said, well, what is he doing? And my mother came. She said, typical mother. Lord, that boy got his cleats on. Oh, yeah, in the head. <laughs> this boy got his whole uniform on. I was sitting there looking at him. And needless to say, open the kickoff, I ran back for a touchdown. We won the wow. championship. And and I can just, my mind went through all the years of me playing sports and my father being a baseball umpire. And, and I was a pitcher at one time and I would get mad and I would dip, bing people with the ball because he would call strikes balls and and so I beamed, I beamed, uh, I ain't gonna tell you who it was, but I beamed <laughs> somebody. And uh, he was about to come from behind the plate. My mother called him, called his name, he stopped. And then uh, we drove in two different cars. So she took my brother home. My, my father took my brother mm -hmm. home and she took me out for ice cream. And she said, now when you walk in this house, when you walk past your daddy, you speak, but you go right upstairs, get in the tub and don't say nothing to him. You know, he's <laughs> so all those things have, you know, have been coming. And then to, you know, when I was uh, a high profile uh, player coming out of high school, I used to love to see my parents smile when people say, you know, where's he going? Where's he going to do? And they didn't really know. And then mm -hmm. uh, my mother, my mother saw me graduate the first of nine children. 
to graduate from college. Uh, and I'm the eighth child out right. of nine children, the first to graduate. So all those things. And then when I got the job here at Southern to see my mother, to bring my mother here for homecoming in 1995. And she got the experience and she said, Babe, I ain't never seen so many people cooking, eating, dancing, <laughs> drinking, and love football like this. She said, we love it in Virginia, but they sure enough love it down here. Yeah. So all those things came to mind. And, you know, of course, uh, Coach Richardson and what he's meant to me and what he what he is in my life. So I've had a chance to sit back and reflect. And, and all the coaches that had a part in my yeah. life, you know, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about from my pop Warner all the way up into my professional career, all my coaches, my educators, uh, my mentors, my supporters, even my haters. You know, uh, I appreciate them all. And, right. uh, you know, I'm just grateful and I'm looking forward to the opportunity. Well, Coach Gray, I just want to congratulate you, man. You paid your, play, paid your dues, 32 years in it, in coaching, and then you get your opportunity uh Southern's a wonderful place. Now, I'm a former basketball coach, but I let you know now, yeah. I have been to at least five or six Southern games on your campus. In fact, I just came, I was at the last game where you all beat Alabama a and I was there. Right. So, so now I'm used to the tradition. I came down there when Coach Richardson was coaching. So uh, I've seen a bunch of coaches on the sideline. Now, Coach, what can the Jaguar Nation expect out of your team? What's What's Coach Gray's philosophy? Well, my philosophy is that we're going to be, uh, you know, I'm a very passionate person. That's and, me. Uh, That's a coach. Uh, fiery. Uh, yep. Believe in discipline. Uh, we're going to be physical. We're going to be fast. You know, we're going to do things the right way. And we're going to play hard for however long it takes to win the ball game. Um, you know, we're going to be complimentary in all three phases of the game, offensive, defense, and kicking game. Uh, of course, you know, I also have a background in special teams. So, you know, um, that's something that I don't take lightly. Um, so we, we'll be excited. We'll be fun. Um, I think the, the thing is, is to uh, make sure that these guys, these young men are uh, prepared and make sure that they go out and, and have a good time playing the game. And then also, like I say, you know, a lot of times uh, coaches want guys that are game changers. I want guys that are life changers. Because, mm -hmm. because you know, the game is in, in, in the game of life. So if we're, li if we're changing lives, then they're going to definitely change the game. So we want, we, want to be, we want to be life changers. We want to be great on the field. We want to be great in the classroom. We want to be great in the community. Uh, all three of those things uh, must go together in order for us to do what we need to do. That's awesome, Coach. That's awesome, man. Good. I, I look forward to watching your teams play. Uh, I did get a chance to uh, – to watch you in the uh, down in New in New Orleans, so uh, congratulations on that win, and 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 you deserve it. And I, and I like the fact that uh, your family was involved, Coach. I'm one of eight. I'm one of eight. There were eight of us in our family. I'm the oldest boy, and right. and and I know what it feels like to have your parents involved in your life yeah. and in your coaching. Like my parents got a chance to watch me coach. They, they, my, mm -hmm. they saw my first game. They saw my last game. Right. So I, I was blessed and. Uh, I, I know that feeling, and if you can relay that to your players, then you've done your job because right. li uh, life players are what we're looking for. We're looking for game changers in life. Correct. And, and I really like what, you, what you're what saying, Coach, so good luck to you, man. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And I, I, I tell you, Coach, I was here at Southern when you were coaching <laughs> at Alabama and m and I actually met you a couple <laughs> times when Coach Banks yes. was, was there. And you came yes. here and did your thing a few times, and I, yes. I like the way that you – you coach a game and play the game. You play, you play football on the basketball court. There you go. You're right. You're right. I enjoyed yep. watching you. I enjoy yep. watching you do what you did. So yep. that yeah. same passion that you that you coach with, that's what I coach with, coach. Yes, I, sir. Yes, sir. I, I believe in that. And then, yeah. and I think as long you can coach your team hard as long as those kids know that you love. Them. That's correct. That's correct. They don't they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> we're we're visiting with coach. Uh, Terrence Graves, uh, new head football coach at Southern University. And, Coach, just listen to everything you know. I, I'm, I'm getting questions. I have my questions that I got to ask, right? 
<laughs> so Tyler will have this questions. I'm getting text messages. I'm looking in the chat room. I'm trying to monitor all of yeah. the questions. So with that being said, a, a, a lot of people uh, want to know a, a kind of, of course, a style of play. You kind of mentioned that. Um, additions to the staff right now as it stands. And then we got another question. What's the strategy for recruiting? We're going to get into recruiting as well. But first, the staff. Um, is it settled? Will there be any additions? Or is it just settled as is of now? Oh, there'll be some additions um, in the process of uh, rounding out, finishing up the staff. Okay. Um, um, they'll be, you know, I'm, I'm making a decision. Actually, uh, offensive coordinator, um, um, that's one of the positions that I'm close to uh, solidifying. So everybody will be in place within the coming weeks. So there will be some additions. So, yes. Now, Coach, um, Coach Titan, now, if you can answer this, fine. If not, I understand. Um, some people want to know, will he still be involved in the staff, or do we have to wait and see when it officially gets announced? As far as you just mentioned about the offensive coordinator position. Oh, Coach Stoughton, he's still here. He's part of the staff. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That clears that part up. Now, um, recruiting. I'm going to paraphrase. Some want to know what is the mixture. We know we got transfer portal. We know we got JUCO and high school recruiting. What is Coach Graves and the staff's philosophy on uh, recruiting? Well, my philosophy really, my personal philosophy has not changed from um, some of the great coaches in the game, college football, especially particularly on the FCS level. Um, you know, college football has changed. The landscape has changed as we know. But I think what you have to do, and for me, you know, everybody has their own style. Mm -hmm. But for, for Terrence Graves and what we're doing at Southern University, we're going to we're going to um, use and utilize all three phases of, of, of uh, recruiting, which is we're going to sign high school players. We're going to sign JUCOs and we'll also utilize the portal to get players that we feel we need to uh, uh, that are essential to what we need. Um, I'm not a big proponent of just jumping in the transfer portal. Um, I've never been a proponent before the transfer portal became um the new thing in college football it was you know a lot of coaches were huge on on transfers and um the junior college route and that's fine but you had to be careful when you mm -hmm. built your team full of jc and transfer guys because uh that's the quickest way to get run out of a school because yeah. everybody doesn't have the same interest the vested interest as if you go and get a young man out of high school who wants to be there and you develop him and grow him and, and nurture him, he'll have a little, he'll have a lot more invested in the school and the program say, as opposed to a guy uh, that has one or two years. Not saying that those guys are not essential, but uh, we won't, um, we will not uh, just build our program based on transfer portal and junior college guys. I, we have a strategic plan. Again, I'm, I'm a proponent of getting the best uh, high school guys, as you can see, we already uh, started that in December. We're getting one of the better players um, out of the state of Louisiana. So, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna utilize those guys, and we want to because we want to develop. We want to build a, a base. Uh, mm -hmm. And then here's the thing, too, Carlos, that I think people have to understand um, with the different signing periods, like the the one in December. You know, I mean, everybody has their own style. And, mm -hmm. you know, to me, you know, to just run out and sign a, a bunch of guys because they got in the transfer portal. Well, I mean, you know, that's not a be all end all and that's not the cure all. And then you got National Signing Day. Well, of course, in February 7th, it, it, that's still not the end. Recruiting has now become mm -hmm. fluid to the point where you can actually recruit all the way up until uh, the opening kickoff. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, me getting the job at the time that I got it, we're definitely, uh, we're being proactive. We're being persistent, uh, about getting what we need in the program, but we also, uh, you know, the, the Bible says be anxious for nothing. 
So we're not going to just run out and sign guys to woo, uh, woo people just to say we don't, um, we don't, um, you know, we, we sign out a bunch of kids, you know, to put on paper. We want the right, we want the right guys that fit what we're going to do here at Southern University. And so, um, when, when the ball is kicked off, uh, coming fall, we'll have the guys, we'll have what we need and who we need in order to accomplish what we want to accomplish here at Southern University. We'll visit with Coach Terrence Graves, new head football coach at Southern University. Coach Graves, Fred, and, and, and I'm glad you cleared that up. Let me let me stop. Let me go back to the point with the with the transfer portal. Um, I've often said maybe the the, the traditional, old fashioned way of building from high school recruit and they matriculate through the program and they're a better player. Uh, when they finish, as when they first started, is is that something you will ever see again overall in college athletics? Or because of the transfer portal now, quick fix, a quick hit, is that what we're going to see in the near future? You asking for me at Southern, or are you just talking about in general? In, 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 in general, general. Yeah. in general. Well, I think it, it goes back to preference. I think because it's it's not a uh, it's not a paintbrush. Uh, you can't you know paint everybody with the same broad brush. you know mm-hmm. brush stroke. Uh, yeah. I think it's about preference and what each coach deems is necessary in terms of building their program. I think if you have um, depth and if you have a say a large junior or senior class. I think that you can you can get more high school guys that you can develop and nurture when those guys go out. Um, I think if you know you you got a lot of you take over a program that may be young, mm-hmm. uh, you may have to go with the more experienced guys until those guys catch up. I just think it there's no there's no uh, exact science to it. There's no right. right or wrong way how you do it. It's everybody uh, it's everybody's way of of what they see fit, what, what best works for their program. Um, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I think the all three phases are, are necessary because that's what's available in today's game. The game has changed and you have to be able to adapt to the changes or you're going to fall by the wayside. Um, and I, I think that the key to it is balance. And again, right. you got to address, you got to right. address what your needs are in order to, uh, be successful, but uh, truly, and uh, you know, my thing is, I'm I'm basically going to develop and build my program the way I see fit. And like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, go look over the uh, high school guys because there are a lot of really, really, really good high school football players out there that can play right now, and mm-hmm. not just two or three years. But there's some guys that can come in and play as true freshmen and have a great impact on the program. So I'm definitely, we're definitely uh, looking at those young men as well. And, um, and then we'll, also, uh, we'll, we'll look at some Juco guys. And then again, of course, we'll, we'll utilize the portal all three phases uh, because that's what today's game is about. I think that you, you got to sit down and, and find out what works best for you and your program. And if you're yeah. looking at coach, um, the roster that, coming back that would also dictate you know of that balance if you if you got a lot of uh juniors and seniors coming back and you need you know maybe a few position areas need a little work then that that'll dictate um how you're going to uh utilize so with that being said the roster coming back me from the outside looking in i think it's a good strong base yeah, yeah, we have a we have a good a good foundation, and uh, we're going to continue to build on that foundation, you know, because you build houses from the foundation up, not roof down. So mm-hmm. we're going we're going to uh, we're going to build on that foundation, and and we're going to add the pieces, the necessary pieces that we need to address some of the you know some of the uh, some of the areas that we may be a little short in. But for the most part, again, we're going to build that thing from the foundation and we're going to add uh, as we see fit to how we how we do that. 
Now, Coach Graham, your specialty, now you're the CEO, but your specialty is, is, is defense, quarterback play. On the offensive side, how important is it to – to look into that area and you've got, you know, I'm thinking about quarterbacks and receivers and the old line um, quarterback room, adding to that one, or you're satisfied with what you have right now. And I know you got two young, um, I guess you call them red shirt freshmen going into next year, T set and um, Wood out of Atlanta promising position room. Yeah, I, I really like I really like what we have in the quarterback room. Um, we have some really good talent in the quarterback room, um, and I think that that's essential. Um, I'm laughing because when you said I'm a I'm a defensive guy, well, you know, I actually played offense all the way up until I went to college. So, <laughs> well, I know you, you as know. a defensive guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can I can be an offensive guy. Now, I'm a football player, <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, I know what you mean, but in all seriousness, mm -hmm. um, I really like what we have in our, our quarterback room. Um, I thought I think Noah uh, did a really good job in the Bayou Classic, mm -hmm. um, and uh, a guy that hadn't played in a you know a couple of years. So um, to see what he's doing, really like this. I really like the development of. Uh, I really like the development of uh, T. Set and Jalen Woods as well. Um, so, um, excuse me, I'm not going to ever say never, um, but you know, we, right now we, we, we're, we're comfortable. I'm not going to say satisfied. We're comfortable with what we have in that room and, and what, whatever, or whomever else may, uh, be added to that room. Uh, but right as it stands right now, I think we, we're comfortable and we're confident in the young men we have in that room. What would be, what would be, the area that you will look into going after recruiting's over in the spring? What position room would you look at the most? Would it be O, o line? Will we see some changes there? Well, I th I think uh, being a head football coach, I'm gonna look in every room, all of them, yeah, you know, all of them. Uh, yeah. You know, regard. I think a lot of times, sometimes people get it uh, misconstrued that you know just because you may have a deficiency in one room and another room, but all the rooms have to be looked in. Even if you right. got a room that's full of all Americans in all conferences, guys, you still got to look in that room because uh, the human element. Guys may get complacent. Guys may get yeah. satisfied. Guys may get undisciplined. So when you start thinking that you're going to. Uh, you know, really focus on one room and, and not the entire program, then you're selling yourself short. Now, it's always good to have depth and experience and talent in certain areas, but uh, the entire the entire program uh, will be looked in. I mean, from everything, from from the uh, every position on offense, every position on defense, and the kicking game. You know, there's room there's room to improve everywhere. So. Uh, being the head football coach, I got to be uh, one that looks at everything and and make sure that everything is in uh, in, uh, in in going in the right directions. Now, I do understand in terms of well, we have to get some depth, you know, some depth mm -hmm. in certain positions. I will say that, yeah, we'll 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 fill those areas that we may need some some depth and maybe some experience. But uh, for the most part, every every room has to be looked, evaluated, checked, upgraded. You name it, it's got to be. Hey, point point well taken. Maybe I should have just asked. <laughs> <laughs> and I can and, 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 and not to, to 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 make an excuse, but I'm getting so many questions. For I'm trying to figure out how to get it in, get it. Uh, this question in, that question in. Uh, right. Now, I've just gotten a couple of questions about strength and conditioning, Coach. Can you address address that? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I guess you're a popular guy, Coach. That'll be, that'll be addressed uh, soon. Mm -hmm. So um, that'll be addressed soon. So uh, 
again, we're in the process of, of uh, completing the staff. And once it's completed, uh, it'll be released. And, and, and uh, so we'll, we'll, you know, that'll be addressed as well. So we're, we're, um, we're going in the right direction. We're trending in the right direction of what we need mm -hmm. to build and sustain our program and get it where it needs to go. We're visiting with Coach Terrence Gray, head football coach. At <laughs> coach, you know, this probably could go on for three hours, but I, yeah. I, 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 I understand because uh, the interest is, is still there. The fan base, look. I understand. Proud, they're a proud fan base. And, and, I Lord, and I remember when Coach Richardson came, that first game, that bar was set right there. And so – now you continue down through the years. It's good to have a passionate fan base, whether, you know, right or wrong. When apathy sets in, that's not good. And that's not to say the Southern fan base is uh, that way. Um, recruiting. Now, statewide, it, when we say local, in your opinion, does that mean the whole state is considered local? And I, and I heard you mention about wherever there are good players at, you're going to try to go and find them at. But but the bank, the whole state of Louisiana, is that considered local to you? Yes, it is local. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, again, I understand what people, you know, I understand fans. I understand how this thing works. But let's just be honest. We're not going to get everybody from Baton Rouge, East Baton Rouge mm -hmm. Parish, West Baton Rouge Parish, right. and the surrounding Paris. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. First of all, we don't have that many scholarships, first and mm -hmm. foremost. So we're gonna get we we gotta we gotta get we gotta build a fence, a wall around Louisiana to get the best players that we can get in state first. And then we expand out. Yeah. And uh, that's in my opinion, that's you know how we're gonna do it, and I know that's how other schools do it in their respective states and, and universities as well. Um local is Louisiana. Um, I agree. And, and, mm -hmm. and because everybody that's uh everybody that's local doesn't necessarily want to stay home. So, you know, you mm -hmm. gotta understand that too. We can recruit uh every person in the in the in the general area, but some people want to go somewhere else and experience other things. I myself, I didn't stay uh I didn't stay in Norfolk. You know, I went to North Carolina to go to school and I was mm -hmm. born and raised um basically on Norfolk State's campus uh with the family and friends and all that but when it came time to go to school I wanted to go somewhere else and that's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. so um so with, with that being said uh we want to we have alumni uh all over the state of Louisiana so we have we have talent all over the state of Louisiana Louisiana is one of the the best states for athletes, period, and and particularly football, since we're talking about football, so we want to do our due diligence and make sure that we recruit, hit every high school in the state of Louisiana, and then we want to branch out. We're gonna hit Mississippi next door. We're gonna hit Texas. We're gonna hit Arkansas. We're gonna hit Alabama. We're gonna hit Georgia. You know, we're gonna recruit. And and I told them if they got to play on the moon, if we got a <laughs> rocket, we're gonna go up there and get him. You know, so. So we're gonna uh, we gonna we gonna go with a guy. We want who want us. Yeah. You know, it's gotta work two ways. And we want who want us, and, and so we're gonna we're gonna do our due diligence to make sure that we start in Louisiana first, and then we're gonna go and, and get those guys who wanna be a part of our program. Coach Petaway? Well, man, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, Coach Graves, I, I'm so impressed. Your your experience definitely uh shows. Um I hope that the Jaguar Nation will get behind you. I, I like what you're presenting, and I, I like the way you represent, and I wish you the best. When you talk about that portal, the, the biggest thing that they need to understand about the portal, it is so new. There is no one way to do this thing. Right. There is no one way to recruit. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's the message that you got to convey every time you talk to these people so that they will understand that. But man, I, I am so impressed. And, and coach, I wish you nothing but the best because I, I think you, number one, you've paid your dues. Your experience mm -hmm. definitely shows. And continue doing what you're doing, coach. I Thank really you, like coach. it, man. Thank and you. I look forward to watching your teams play. 
I thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Because yeah. you know, Coach Gray, we did had some knockout, yep. dragouts discussion. <laughs> and, and, and I don't mean to put you in the middle, but I can <laughs> I can phrase it this way. I often say that I'm for coaches that we society we tell them to do things the right way. Right. Go through the process. Right. Right. And then at the end of the day, right. the big O word, opportunity. Correct. Correct. Then you afforded the opportunity to coach whether no matter what sport it is. Correct. But we do, I do have a, a special feeling when guys like that don't get the opportunity. And then a guy just as Willa Brown would say, just hop to the front of the line because of their name. And by the way, in most cases, those guys didn't sniff a HBCU, but they come to get their training, quote unquote. The alma mater won't hire them. Now, coach, you stop me if I'm going too far because I'll get on the roll and <laughs> it, 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 it's about you. But um, your, 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 your thoughts and perspective of those young men and young ladies in the coaching profession that they need to get an opportunity and then get the support on making it in, in, in college athletic as a profession. Well, Carlos, I'm glad you asked that question. And I, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, I was waiting to get in the position that I am in now to actually be able to speak uh, in regards to that. Because sometimes when you do it from another seat, people think, it comes from a place of jealousy and envy and all right. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I can, I can now that I've been blessed to be in the seat, now I can say what I want to say. Right. And mm -hmm. as it regards to that, here's the thing, and you're spot on. I think sometimes, and I've said this to uh, other people, you know, at other universities and different audiences. And, and here's here's my take on this: everybody has the right to hire who they deem is is. Uh, necessary for their program. However, I think we do ourselves a disservice when we have young men and young women who make the commitment and the sacrifice uh, to invest in our institutions and programs. We grow, you know, when I got in this uh, profession at 22 years old, all I was taught was, listen, learn everything you can learn, go here, do this, yep. do that, grow, uh, so when, and, and this was by those legends, the legendary coaches, mm -hmm. say because we're not going to be doing this, uh, forever. So you got to prepare yourself and be ready. So when we step down, y'all step in and keep it yep. going and, and take it to another level. Well, as young men and women in this profession, particularly at our institutions, we, you know, we take that to heart and we, we, we really work and grow and develop to have those opportunities. And then when when those opportunities come and we're not even mentioned or we're not even uh, thought of. And, you know, the first thing they say, something that, I, you know, that kind of is a pet peeve of mine. I hate when they say, oh, we you know, we're recycling coaches. Well, my question is this. Why in the world of athletics, it's a recycle job when it comes to us. But in a professional business world, if you go from one company to another company to another company to another company. Are you not being recycled? Right. I'm just asking the question. Is that not recycling? If you yeah. take a job with this company because they give you a better opportunity or they give you a chance to influence it. So, so my thing is, why does it have to be a negative connotation when it comes to us getting our opportunities as opposed to the people seeing so well, you know, these they, they've been committed, they learn, they grown, and we're talking about the ones that are qualified. I'm not no. saying giving people a job because they've been there for a long period of time and they haven't right. grown and haven't shown their work. I'm talking about the coaches who have labored, who have learned, who have put the time in. You know, consider them, give them an opportunity. You know, yes. in order for a guy or or a young lady to become a head coach, they have to get an opportunity to be a head coach. And <laughs> nobody comes in the world as a head coach. Nobody. No. So in order for you to get the opportunity, you got to give the opportunity. And, and you know, people say to me, I've heard, you know, since I've been in the seat, well, he's been coaching 30 something years and now he's just becoming a head coach. You know, I had a head coaching opportunity at the age 31 and I had just been coaching six, seven years. But, and I say again, 
why take a job? Why take a job for the sake of being a head coach? Right. If it's not a job that's going to help me advance my career, because if I take a job that's not favorable and I'm not successful, then I can't coach and I may not ever get another job. Right. So why not stay in a great situation, learn, grow, win, mentor, develop young men, make them successful while you're doing it. So now when the opportunity presents itself later on down the road, then you do that. You know, mm-hmm. it's 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 it's. You know, it's not taking a job just for the sake of being a head coach. And I think a lot of times we need to embrace our own because mm-hmm. when when because when we when we do leave and go to those older places, then it's man, we can't get them to come back. Man, they this, they that. But then the ones who choose, like myself, it's not that I couldn't work at those other institutions. I choose oh. to make a career at the HBCUs because yep. I want to be a part of our culture that to de- to develop mentor and make sure that ours are successful at our institutions. That's why I do this. I had choice. I had options to coach at other schools at P uh, P fives and G fives and other FCS. I had those opportunities. And, 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 and just as, as uh, even as, as, as last year, you know, I've had those opportunities, but because I don't sit around and talk about, this, that, and third, and who called me, and this, that, third. It's not about that. It's about being where you are assigned to be. I have been called to do this. Yep, that's so, your assignment. So God, God is talking in my yep. assignment. So yep. I don't. When people say he's an HBCU coach, that's not a negative connotation or stigma to me. That is a badge of honor that I wear proudly, and I know a lot of coaches across the country that love the fact that they are graduates of HBCUs, they're coaches in HBCUs, they're champions in HBCUs, they're providers in HBCUs. If if we can celebrate our doctors, our lawyers, our educators, everybody that are graduates from HBCUs, let's celebrate our coaches from HBCUs. And I'm going to go off my soapbox because I can talk about that for hours, but I thank you for asking me that, and that's how I feel about that. Yeah, Yeah. and and, and Coach Pettaway, and to support these young men and, and women. Just because I got a, a, a name and what I've done, but you had to earn that process. But yep. that goes up to our, some of our administrations. They believe that you've got to make that kind of hire. I say, no, you don't have to. You know, you know HBC football has been pretty good for a long, long, long time. time. It's not just yeah. a come on. Come, um, uh, uh, Johnny, come lately. Um. So, oh, okay. Thanks, the producers talking to me. On that note, Coach, I, I, I guess we're gonna have to try to get you back. I tried yep. to got to. We got to. Um, <laughs> I, I know. I know you gotta get out of here, and uh, you got some other things to do. Um. I tried to at least ask a few of the things um, that uh, the fans wanted to know. So, whenever you get the time, um. We can sit down and have another chat and cover the things that we, you know, didn't get a chance to get into today. But for the sake of time, I appreciate you. I know it's a big recruiting uh, weekend and to give us uh, pretty pretty much about 40 minutes. We really do appreciate it. And once again, congratulations on uh, becoming a head football coach at Southern University. A quick, quick closing comment, if, if you care to do so, Coach. Well, Carlos, uh, thank you and uh, Coach Petaway for allowing me this opportunity to, to speak. And uh, I'm just so excited and elated uh, to be the head football coach at Southern University. And I love the passion of the Jaguar Nation. I grew up here professionally, so I understand it. I understand the culture. And we're going to do everything we possibly can to make sure that we uh, get the Jaguars back to our rightful place. And that's at the top. So uh, I appreciate all the love, the support, um, and uh, I look forward to uh, uh, you all supporting us as we do great things here at Southern University. Appreciate it, Coach. Uh, say, God speed, safe travels, and uh, we'll talk again real soon. All right. Thank you. Go Jags. All right. Yeah, go Jags. We're going to take a quick time out um, coming up, uh, doublehead on the Black College Sports Network. Uh, starting at 1 p.m. between uh, Fort Valley State and Miles. Um, we'll 
Let me remind you about that again right before uh, the end of, of the Carlos Brown Show. We're going to take a quick time out, and when we come back, there will be more of the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never, ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Welcome back to the final two segments of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Once again, Happy New Year 2024. Coach Petaway and uh, Swag Bat Conference basketball play uh, is coming up. Uh, and by the way, speaking of that, I was told to ask you about Alabama and them and the, uh, the home broadcast of the basketball games. Um, you and um, I'm hearing a uh, former Southern grad uh, <laughs> is going to be on the broadcast with you. Would you know of a guy named Morel Mo Carter? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo, Mo and I have been doing it. Uh, 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 we've done the last few games together, and he's going to be the voice from now on. And he's a he's a phenomenal person, man. I, I really enjoy uh, being on the set with him. And Mo Carter does a great job. So Southern uh, Jaguar Nation ought to be happy because one of their graduates is doing well. He's one. He is the uh, probably the top broad, uh, sports broadcaster in this area uh, in Huntsville. We have four stations, and uh, he's at the top of his game. So he had a, a good upbringing down there on the bluff. And and so the, I'm, I'm in, the Jaguar Nation has a lot to be proud of because I, I know I got disconnected somehow. But let me tell you something, Coach Graves. I'm, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. I, I'm impressed, and I just think that the Jaguar Nation needs to get behind this guy, uh, give him an opportunity, and I think he needs to get out. He needs to get out and get his message because he can really deliver it to the. I, I think he can he can put the message out there where the fans will understand it and the alumni base will understand. So he, I, I I would have told him and and perhaps later on I let him know he needs to get out and get his message out because he. Uh, he, he's very believable, and I think that uh, this is the shot in the arm that Jaguar Nation has been looking for. Uh, you know, a lot of times everybody wants to say we need a big-name coach. Well, how did the big-name coach get, get their start? They had to start somewhere. So uh, I'm very impressed, Carlos, and I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I know you want to yeah. get back to basketball. Go ahead. Well, 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 well no. I mean, we'll, we'll tie it all in. You know, the, bi the big names, uh, again, if – they want to get their start. Why not? Right. Why not your alma mater? And why not go through the process? Correct. 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 You know that's what everybody else does. Um, mm -hmm. The tie in. Uh, pick pick a comment. The room to grow. Here's what she says, and I'm saying she because I see a picture there. 
I'm going to give him a chance and support him as long as he doesn't do us like Dooley. I'm supporting him. It's a process and let him build our team up. Right. So that's, I would take from that, that's a Southern supporter alumni, alum, and, and that's the way you, you have to look at it. Right. You, you really do. And um, I, I understand wins are wins, losses and losses. Yeah, John, you're right. Coach Graves is a breath, breath of fresh yes, air. Yes, he is. Yes, and, he see, is. and that's the thing, getting your message out. Yeah, it's X's and O's. Having a great staff around you, a staff that's going to, you know, and I'll use this word, challenge you. Yeah, Jethro says something, too. Let me, let me get that in. HBC organizations need to improve as a whole. The culture is there, but the lack of know-how when it comes to finances is not. A, a shout-out to FAMU's National Alumni Association to try to help keep Coach Simmons there and noting the need for assistant coaches and position coaches and in, in, in their needs, they raised a, a, a amount of money to help. And so we still need the help, you know, financially. Yeah, we got the culture. We got the passion. You're right. But financially, we have to do as much as we can. And now in this time, in this climate, in this country, even from a political standpoint, Coach Pettaway, don't get me started on that. <laughs> don't get me started on that. Yep. You hold your, your hand up. Individual fingers and a thumb, but when you come together, yep. it's tight. And that's kind of what we need. Because nobody can tell a story like ourselves. Nobody will care about us like ourselves. Yeah, we'll have to get in the room sometime and hash it out, agree to disagree. If you tune in this show, me and Charles disagree all the time. But one thing I do know, he's an HBCU, HBCU supporter. You are. Also, from a professional standpoint, a basketball coach. Although you're in retirement, there's no way you shouldn't be consulted in other basketball programs. You are a treasure. Right. A treasure. That, that's why when I thought about you know, add people to the show. I thought I thought about Coach Fedaway. I would see Coach Fedaway come into the FD Clark Activity Center. He was, quote, unquote, on the other side. But the big picture I saw was this guy can coach and the passion. That's kind of what I think about with Coach. Great. The passion. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and really, he may have calmed down a little bit because that passion was really – really uh tremendous we got about six minutes left and um our producer extraordinary says we must get out on time oh we will we will <laughs> game of the week back to basketball in the, in the conference you can either choose one from today or monday well uh well for today let's let's do it this way today i'm gonna really be looking at your southern jaguars hosting texas southern I think that's going to be a very pivotal game on the men's side, on, on, on the women's side. Uh, it's probably going to be uh, A&M women at Pine Bluff because Pine Bluff is on the rise. Alabama A&M, for, you know, for three or four years has, has been in that top four. And then when, when, you, when you look at Monday, it's probably going to be uh, Texas Southern going down to, uh, to Grambling. Mm -hmm. You know, completing, completing, you know, the the, the, the tour. Uh, that's going to be the game on Monday on, on the men's side. And then uh, for the women, of course, PV is Southern. You know, coach coming back, coming back home. So on the women's side, that will be the game on Monday. Uh, Prayer View at Southern, uh, Sandy Pew coming home. And then uh, we, this is going to be a very pivotal weekend, man, because it gets the teams off to a good start. You're going to have half of these teams going to get off to a good start. The other half, not so well. And they're going to be playing catch up for the rest of the season. Well, you know, you want to get off to a good start. You know, the old cliche is you win, you, you take care of your business at home. Yep. And if you can go on the road and at least be 500, yep. you put yourself yep. in, a, in a position 
if you're at home, coach, is it more pressure? This might be a rhetorical question. Is it more pressure to start off conference at home or is it tougher on, on the road? Because it's kind of it's kind of a couple of mindsets. Go ahead. Go Man, ahead. I'd rather be at home any day. I'd rather <laughs> be at home any day with my fan base, with, with my kids being in familiar surroundings uh, to start off a season, especially your conference season. So being at home for me would be would be my choice. I hate going on the road to start the season off. That that's a uh, to me it's a no brainer. You you're more comfortable. You're sleeping in your own bed. Everything it's a routine. Whereas on the road, you know uh, things can pop up that are out of your control. You have more control of what happens at home. So that that's been my philosophy. Well, with that being said. Um, we're coming to the close of our first show in 2024. Uh, can't wait. Uh, next Saturday, we'll have a uh, recap of the games from today and Monday. Um, on this show, uh, we, of course, talked about uh, Coach Willie Simmons and now moving on, no longer the head football coach at FAMU. FAMU is in the process of making a uh, football hire. Also, we talked about kicking off the SWAC conference play um, in the conference. We mentioned the favorites, but at this point now, Coach, it's about who can endure the the race from start to finish and who can be consistent and have a little good fortune as well as far as uh, no injuries. We also... um, Interview Coach uh, Terrence Graves, and if you miss it, you can you know go back uh, and, and watch the interview with Coach Graves. Uh, his thoughts on becoming a Southern football coach. Uh, he talked about his style of play, uh, staff, and personnel, and then also he really knocked out a part, part talking about coaches getting an opportunity to become a head coaches as well. Um, with Very this, impressive. Very yep. impressive. Very Im- impressive. Um, would like for the listeners to um, just kind of review, check out our podcast again. When this show ends, you can it's 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 on demand. You can go back and watch it. Um, kind of give us a review. What you think about it? Um, also, like, listen, and share. Sign up for those notifications. Uh, when the show, Carlos Brown Show, and the Black College Sports Network. This network uh, is on the cuffs of doing some great things uh, coming up in the in the future. Uh, Fort Valley and Miles, uh, double headers, it starts immediately after the show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Coach, hey, right away, and, close and, and Carlos, yes, uh, it's, it's 30 to 21 Jackson State over Alcorn at halftime of the women's basketball game. And, and I look forward to uh, being on the show here in 2024, Carlos. And uh, uh, everything looks good, man. And congratulations and happy new year to you and everybody else. Yeah, we appreciate uh, Melanie, Roy, everybody, all our colleagues at Black College Sports Network. Now also live on Instagram. Remember, Carlos Brown Show um, on Instagram, Carlos Brown Show on X, Twitter, and also on uh, Facebook. Until next Saturday at 11 a.m. for another edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Until next time, as always, peace and God bless. <laughs>